Now often when we create drone data or indeed any type of spatial data, we want to incorporate it and match it with other types of data sets. So it means it's really important to make sure that they are correctly and accurately spatially located. So here I have a subset of a drone image mosaic and what I want to do is to make sure that it's in the right location. So to do that I need another data set that I'm going to look at matching it to. Now when we actually flew this data set we deployed some ground control points and so if I zoom all the way into this location here you should be able to see this fluorescent yellow floppy hat that's on the coral there. So we use that to accurately determine its location using a GPS. Now we had a, a variety of these deployed out during the survey and that's, that's the only one that you'll actually be able to see within this particular mosaic because I have subset it. But that's one way in which you can grab your ground control by having those deployed out there but sometimes you just don't have the luxury of getting out and putting control so you need to use another data set that you're happy where it's located and to reference your data set to that one. So what I'm going to use here is some Google satellite to imagery and we are going to match the two data sets together. So first of all what I need to do is to load up that as a base map. Now in QGIS 3 there's a little bit of a tricky way of going about bringing in Google Earth imagery. So let's go about first of all figuring out how we do that. Now what I want to do is to get up the, the browse window here. So if I come down here to the panels and I'm going to tick on browser here. Now what this allows me to do is to come into these XYZ tiles. All right? So this is also a quick way you can add OpenStreetMap data, for example, to your, to your table of contents and the layers here. But what I want to do is to add the Google Satellite data, and this is the way we do it in QGIS 3. So if we right click on this and say we want to go to a new connection, and under name I'm going to say this is Google Satellite. Now it's asking for a URL here and so I have actually prepared that earlier and you can see here's a range of URLs that you can use depending on which Google service you want to connect to. So we want to connect to the Google satellite service here. So we're just going to grab that URL, copy that and I'm going to paste it into here into the URL. Now the other thing that we need to do is to change the max zoom level to 19. All right, so once we've done that, let's hit OK and that should connect through. And then when we want to actually incorporate it into our table of contents, all we need to do is to double click it from this browser area to send it down into the layers. So we've brought that through there and you can see that now it's actually sitting on top of my Heron Island imagery. So again, I can tick that off to be able to see my drone data or more effectively, I can move it down. Now, for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to assume that the satellite imagery is actually better than the drone data in terms of its locational accuracy. But there is quite an issue with this particular image here as well. Let's see if we can see it. So I want you to focus on this line here, which is the bund wall on Heron Island. So that it's a, an array of concrete bricks that's stopping sediment come into the boating channel here. Now you can, if I pan over, you can just see it in the satellite data off the side here on the left. And so you can see that there is a shift between the bund wall that we see in the drone data and that in the satellite data. And so that's the sort of effect that we're aiming to correct for. Now that's not too bad, except when I turn off my drone imagery, you can actually see that this bund wall is imaged sort of twice here. So you can see it once here where my cursor is, and then a discontinuity where it comes through here. So my satellite data isn't actually as good as I would like it to be, but sometimes that's the best that you get. So you need to decide whether or not you're going to use your drone data as, as the most accurate data set you have, and then georeference other data sets to it, or if you're going to use the satellite data here. So for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to say that the Google satellite imagery is, is the best data that I have and I need to somehow move my drone imagery to align with that. 
So the first thing that we need to do is to head up to plugins and make sure that we have the georeferencing tool available there. So in the toolbar, we just start to start typing for georeferencing and then we can tick that on. And once we've got that, we hit close. We now find the georeferencing tool underneath the raster menu option. So if we click on that here, we open this georeferencing option interface. Now what we'd like to do first up is to import the image that we're going to georeference, which is that Heron Island image mosaic. So if we just click on that here to open the data set, and I'm going to bring that in here. So we have it just open now, and we'd like to go now into the settings and make some changes. So first of all, let's have a look at this transformation type. We, we do have a number of different options, and the more sophisticated the option you use, the more number of control points you will need to include. For the moment, we're just going to stick with the linear transformation. And I'm going to use the cubic resampling method. Again, there's a number of different options there. If you're using hyperspectral data, for example, and you want to preserve your spectral values within your pixel, or alternatively, if you have some categorical data that you're georeferencing, you might want to choose nearest neighbor instead, but we're going to go with cubic here today. I'm going to make sure that we are using the correct projection and coordinate system, which it's already held within this drone data. So I want to make sure that that's there. And all we're going to do is essentially just shift our image a little bit. So that's all good. We might click that on the project there. Now we also want to make sure that we've got an output raster identified and I'm just going to just make that geo at the end there. So by having that suffix at the end, that just reminds me exactly what I've done to process my image there. And just make sure you've got this ticked on here so it will load up the new image when it's been completed. And once you hit OK, that's fine. We'll now get into our georeferencing. So what we really want to do is to be picking points that we can see in both data sets, which is a little bit challenging for this particular project because the spatial resolution is so different and also the date on the imagery is different as well. But what we're going to do is just do the best that we can and see how we go. So up here along the top, we've got our option to add control points. And I'm going to zoom in and choose this dog leg on the bund wall as my first point. So I'm just gonna click on that here. And I'm going to now return to my map to pick the corresponding point from the satellite image. So again, if you did have the coordinates that you've used from the GPS, for example, that's where you could just add that in now. But let's head back to the map canvas and turn this one off and go to our satellite image. Now, what I've also done is I have actually checked with other data that I have, and I know that it's this version of the bundle here that's correct, as opposed to the shadow that we see just in here. So I'm going to just zoom out a little bit and then you can just see from, from around about there that that's where we're going to put that dog leg. And again, it's not perfect, but we're just gonna do the best that we can. So we hit OK on that one and you'll see that the point comes up in this ground control point table down the bottom. Now at any stage, if you don't like the point that you've created, it's easy enough just to right click on it and remove. Now the next point that I'm going to do is in the vicinity of this open patch of sand. Again, it's not ideal because of course these features are changing all the time, but let's run with it here. So let's pop that on there and go from the map canvas. And I believe that's this patch just here. We hit OK and now we start to see these residuals change. So what we really want is these residuals which are explaining the fit of the model. We want those to be small, ideally smaller than half a pixel. But we'll see how we go and, I, and I'm fairly certain that we're not going to get it on this particular image based on the challenges that we face. But that's okay, we'll do the best that we can. Now the third point that I'm going to do, and we need to create at least three points, so obviously the more points you can capture the better. The next one that I am going to do is just in this, this sandy patch by this coral here and head on over to my map canvas and, and I believe that that's in this area here. So we hit OK on that and now you can see immediately 
that it creates these residuals and so they're, they're varying now that I've got a number of different points in my model and they're going to increase and decrease based on the accuracy of the points that you have and how close to the model that it believes it needs to be is. Now as I zoom out you can see that this is quite far away from where the model believes it needs to be. So these big red lines are the estimated error. So by putting in that third point there, it's really suggesting that one, at least one of these three points is not in the correct location. So what we can do is, is delete a point and move around a little bit and try and find some better points as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a few more points and figure out what the best configuration is. Now hopefully your data set is going to get you far lower residuals than what we've got with this particular data set here today. But the idea is really to understand the concept of what's going on and how we can improve it if we've got the data that's, that's going to work with us for that. So in any case, let's move ahead with this and let's run this transformation and see how we go when we bring it into, into our map and see how well it overlays that base data. So on this top bar here, we've got the little play button. So let's hit start georeferencing and that's just gonna go ahead and run the model over every single pixel in that image and output it straight into QGIS. So our georeferenced image has now popped up into our table of contents over here on the left-hand side. So let's right click and zoom into that layer so it fills the full extent and also get rid of that black background, which I'm not a fan of. So we'll hit zero on that and OK and get rid of those no data pixels. Now at the moment we can see that we have some alignment with the bund wall over here. So let's just go back and see what it was like before. So here's our bund wall on the drone data and then the satellite data behind that as well. So we put our, our new image over the top and you can see that there's definitely been a shift there as well. So I guess the question is, which data set is the most correct? And again, that's always going to be a challenge if you're not 100% confident with the data that you have been given. So really the only way to resolve this issue would be to use the, the data that we collected on the day with our ground control points and using that GPS information or using other survey data to make sure that where we've put our data is actually in the correct location. This is important when we want to look at change detection, for example, because we don't want spatial inaccuracy to be suggesting to us that something has changed when it's really just been in the wrong place to start with. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how we go about georeferencing and you can do it with all different types of data sets as well.